Hey guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Happy Halloween if you guys are watching this the day of. If not, welcome to the channel. My name is Ash. Today we're going to take a look at the strongest champion in the game, arguably Lydia the Death Siren, certainly the most difficult champion to get. This is a void affinity champion who is not going to be available from any shards in the game, well, especially void shards, <laughs> namely, right? Uh, you can only get her by three-starring every single faction or crypt, something that I actually did. I finished it uh, about a day and a half ago now. I was very tempted to rush out a video on this new champion, really giving, you know, my first take on this champion, but I really wanted to do a little bit more due diligence in actually you know use her in everywhere in the game and really take a little bit of time to to experience this champion and to I guess come up with some firm thoughts in terms of her her power index right overall in the game is she game breaking and that's kind of where I want to start today's video as you can see by the way if you're watching this the day that I uploaded uh, we will be getting a boosted or 10 time exact ex excuse me event coming up for Narma the Returned, uh, F Masked Fearmonger, and Little Miss Annie from Void Shards. Those are three of the new champions, so I'm actually saving my shards for that event personally. Anyway, guys, uh, what I want to do is talk about this champion. First of all, Faction Wars. I, Demon Spawn was actually my very final crypt that I finished, and this is the team that I won with uh, it was actually kind of strange. I, I went so many different ways with this team. I had allures for a while. I had, you know, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this team, but it was uh, finally this team. It was Tainix Hate Flower, one of the crappier epics in the game, at least in my opinion, but with that heal on the A1 that finally kind of got me through this dungeon with also Infernal Baroness on the squad. Uh, so anyway, that aside, I unlocked Lydia last night. By the way, this is going to be a longer video, guys. I will do the timestamps on it so you guys can fast forward to wherever you're most interested, but I do want to present this as a more thorough guide to you guys, and we'll talk about a lot of different things throughout this video, too. It's not just going to be, uh, you know, staring at her, how much damage does her A1 do, you know what I'm saying? So, anyway, let's take a look at it, right? Lydia the Death Siren. Now, before we get too far in terms of her, her kit and stuff, I'm going to take her on a quick dragon run and talk quickly about kind of the overall power index of this champion and the game in, in general. And why am I doing this? Why are we opening this way? Because I don't want to, I don't want to just leave. I, so I, I made a video about a month ago saying that Lydia D the Death Siren is going to be bad for Raid Shadow Legends. That was before they announced her big nerf uh, that was pre-release. So it's kind of convoluted, but you guys get the point. So I want to actually address, I want to start this video with addressing that video. So I ended that video by saying that here's, here's why I'm against this champion. I'm all for strong rewards when people complete the most difficult area in this game, which is Faction Wars right now before Doom Tower's release. So I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. I love the fact that there's a really awesome champion that we get and we can only get through doing that. However, if she's too strong, if she can help you out in too many different areas, especially PVP in the arena, I feel like that just creates a, a big issue in Raid Shadow Legends. It furthers the divides between the whales and the non-huge spenders in this game. And, and unabashedly, I am a big spender in this game. Hence, I, I have Lydia, right? If you spend enough money, you'll eventually get her, right? You'll eventually be able to level up the champions and level up the gear and, and make it work. Uh, that's not to say there's not strategy involved. And a lot of people can get through the faction wars with a lot less money spent than others. But, you know, back to the point here, I want to make sure that this champion is not so game breaking that it makes it way more difficult to compete with people who have her. Because again, that creates this kind of mechanism in the game where unless you have this champion, you're screwed. And I never want there to be one champion in this game that is that much better than all the other champions, especially if that champion can't be summoned in a shard. Uh, the good news here is I don't think she's, she's, you can make a case she's the best champion in the game, but I don't think you can make a, a concrete case that she is the best champion in the game, bar none, and if you don't have her, you're screwed. Uh, and I'm going to let you guys be the judge of that throughout today's video. So you can see her, I don't know if you're paying attention to the background, but pretty beast mode, uh, a minute dragon run with this incredibly OP team. Uh, I'm not really going to talk about it too much because I do want to talk about the two ways that you can build Lydia the Death Siren, okay? Uh, I, you know, I've already made a mistake in building this champion. I went with, well, let's go ahead and take a look at her first before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's not rush it. Let's not rush it here. So Lydia the Death Siren, first of all, really, really cool aesthetic on this champion. Like, super cool. I just love the, uh, I just, she's just really cool. I just love the whole motif here of this uh, fallen. She looks almost like Demon Spawn, right? 
Uh, anyway, her skills on the A1, we're gonna go through these pretty quickly because they're lengthy, you know? So, attacks one enemy, has a 100% chance when booked, we're just gonna use the book numbers here, of placing a fear debuff for one turn, okay? Also has a 100% chance of place, or increasing the duration of poison sensitivity debuffs, which she also has on her A3 nullification. Passive. Attacks enemy champions with this skill whenever they place a freeze, a stun, a fear, or a true fear uh, debuff on any ally. The number of attacks increases according to how many debuffs are placed at one time. So, you know, one attack for each freeze, stun, fear, true fear, and the first attack will target the attacker, and then all the rest will be on random. Enemies can only attack each enemy once. Her damage is based off of attack. Siren's Whale is one of those... Just insane abilities that uh, really you could, again, argue, you could argue this is the best ability in the game. And this is one of her, like, keynote abilities that she has in her kit. Siren's Whale attacks all enemies, so it's already doing damage, which is already pretty crazy for this ability. So we get an AoE attack, and we get 100% weaken and decrease defense. So all, already it's like Dracomorph's ability, but then you add a strengthen and an increased speed buff on all allies for two turns, there's a lot of champions that add increased speed, like Sifi the Lost Bride, for example, on like one of these OP uh, buff abilities. Uh, however, with the strength in there, which is a very rare buff to find in this game right now, there's not that many champions. Whirlum Frost King comes to mind. There's a couple others, but there's not that many who have a strength in on all allies. Strong version, uh, it's really, really valuable, right? Especially on a three-turn cooldown. Nullification attacks one enemy two times. First, it has a 100% chance of landing points of sensitivity for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. The second has a 100% chance of placing a block buffs and a block cooldown skills for two turns on a three-turn cooldown. That's insane as well. And then Death Hold, her other kind of flagship ability, if you will, denies enemy, enemy revive attempts. This works even if this champion is dead. If this champion is alive, when an enemy revive is denied, Revives all dead allies with 50% HP and a 50% turn meter. Grants an extra turn instead if there are no dead allies. If this champion is dead when the enemy revive is denied, it revives this champion with 50% HP and 50% turn meter. And this skill will ignore block revive. So a skill that ignores block revive, first of all, is noteworthy. Uh, denying enemy revive attempts is certainly noteworthy on kind of a passive ability. And then all these revivals that it has built into it as well is insane. Death Hold is an insane ability, especially for the arena, but even for Ice Golem, as we'll see in this video. I have her with a, a very special Ice Golem team just to demonstrate how this will, will work against the Ice Golem with his minions. Uh, but before we get to that, I'll, I'll show you how I have her equipped. I'll talk about the two or three different ways to build this champion, and then we'll kind of get into the dungeons. And I have, I'm in Platinum Arena as well, so we'll play her some in Platinum as well. Uh, I'm going to change her masteries up a little bit, but I'll tell you uh, what I do when I do it. So Aura, best resist in arena in the game at 100. So that's her kit. Masteries, you have a lot of flexibility on this champion. Uh, really nice to have Cycle of Ve uh, Revenge. 50% chance of increasing the turn meter by 15% when an ally is attacked with a critical hit. Will only uh, increase the turn meter once if the ally receives multiple hit from a single uh, skill. And then Retribution, right? 50% chance to counterattack when this enemy loses, champion loses 25% of their max HP or more on one single enemy hit. And then uh, Support, I went all the way down to Eagle Eye, plus 50 accuracy. Now, this is an interesting champion in the sense that you could make a case for almost any mastery on, on her. She's like very, very well-rounded. Her multipliers are not insane. And I tested her out in Savage Gear, in Crit Damage, in Crit Rate. And it wasn't enough for me to justify uh, wanting to build her for the arena to be like a quasi debuffer and nuker. And, you know, we'll get to the arena in a bit here, but I do have really strong thoughts after a day now in Platinum Arena testing her out on where she'll be best used. But again, I am not the best arena player in the world. I'm not like your top three finisher every season or anything like that. So these are just my opinions. Just want to be, you know, forthright here. I don't know all the answers to, to anything in this game, okay? Uh, so anyway... I went Eagle Eye to increase the accuracy, but the thing is, is, you know, spoiler on the arena, I don't see her as really a, a, a debuffer because 
Madam Saris is better, you know, especially as you scale. And people who unlock Lydia the Death Siren already have almost all these champions, right? Because you have to have a ton of champions. I guarantee you have Madam Saris, right? If you have Lydia, because you had to be every faction war in three star, every single faction crypt. Uh, so I don't, I, I'd rather have someone who strips all the buffs away, unless you're just gonna sub them out every single time. But in generally speaking, I, I, I kind of regret building here with Eagle Eye. I don't think it's necessary. Even for dungeons, to build your accuracy high enough, it's easy to do, right? It's easy to do even without an accuracy banner. You only need like 220 accuracy for her to land all of her debuffs. So, you know, I, I kind of regret doing that. Also, she obviously benefits hugely from lasting gifts with that strengthen in the, in the increased speed. And she also benefits from Master Hexer. So, you know, in an ideal world, you'd kind of go down to Cycle of Magic and you pick up both of these masteries here. And, you know, I tried her out, like I said, in Helm Smasher. Uh, just not a lot of damage, man. She's, you know, n she's not a nuker. She's a very, very low base attack. Uh, but you can pick up War Master. It will really increase her damage. And if you wanted to go Helm Smasher, sure, go for it. Or Flawless Execution if you wanted to just try to maximize her nukage abilities. However, again, I wasn't that impressed. So I'm not going to really show you that build because why well, show you something that I was not impressed in? Uh, but it's an option, okay? So I have her in kind of like a hybrid build right now. Uh, obviously, great gear. I, I figured why well, put her in bad gear because, again, if anybody who has this champion, you're going to be putting her in, in amazing gear anyway. So I kind of went defense. Her base stats real quick here are uh, 20k HP, 900 attack, very, very low. Speed nice and healthy at 110. Defense 1288, not insane by any stretch of the imagination. So what I wanted to do here is build her with some resist, build her with a lot of accuracy, build her with a lot of defense, a lot of speed, and I threw some crit rate gauntlets on her because I wanted to put out a little bit of damage. However, this hybrid build is okay, but I feel like after using her for 24 hours, I'm gonna make these changes uh, before we go into the dungeons. I feel like this is a mistake on my end. Uh, by the way, I did put accuracy on her banner, HP on her amulet, uh, defense on the, and, and one of the reasons for that was extra accuracy on the uh, sub roll and then you know speed on the boots hp and crit rate so again very much of a hybrid build i, I couldn't decide if i wanted to i prioritized uh, uh resist as well on this gear as you guys can see uh resist on almost every piece but i think that honestly for the arena you don't see Dracomorph, really, ever in, in, in Platinum. Certainly, very seldomly in Gold, because Madam Saris is better. Removing all buffs and putting incre decreased defense is enough. You don't need the weekend on there necessarily as well. So, I'm kind of rethinking how I build this champion. I'm not going to put her with this high of accuracy. I'm going to put instead, I'm going to go for uh, the resistance. I'm going to go for Unshakable uh, with plus 50 resist for the arena build. And I'm going to forfeit her what little damage she's putting out anyway. And I'm actually going to swap this out with a defense or an HP, probably a defense on the gauntlets, defense percentage. And I think that's going to be a much better arena build for the type of team that we're going to build her on. Of course, she can be, again, your debuffer on a speed nuke team. Uh, but, you know, we'll get into more of that once we get to the arena. So everybody's kind of trolling the reviews right now and giving her like very low scores. Don't believe the reviews. Uh, it's just a troll. Uh, she's insane, obviously, as a champion. Uh, it just it, it depends on where you want to use her. You guys already saw her in Dragon. Let's go ahead and take a look at Ice Golem. All right, guys, so going into Ice Golem, check out this team. So this team is <laughs> built to do a ton of damage and to absolutely wipe out. But the crazy thing about this is I think this really illustrates the power of her passive once we get to the actual Ice Golem. So obviously these first two waves are going to be fairly easy, I think. Uh, we might lose somebody on the second wave, but it doesn't matter. We're going to be able to revive them all up. So I have Dark Elaine, I have Seer, Miscreated Monster, Royal Guard, and Lydia. So it's really Miscreated Monster and Lydia here, like, supporting this team. And this is not a real team. I would not run this squad in terms of a, a farming team or anything like that. But again, it's really to show you guys the power of that passive once we get to the actual Ice Golem here. So let's see if we can get by the second wave without losing anybody. Again, not that it really will matter here because we'll be able to revive them right up. As soon as we get the first revive denial from the ice golem, we're end we're gonna end up losing somebody uh, most likely here. So let's see. We get to the ice golem in 44 seconds or so. Let's go ahead and see what we can do and get ready to wipe. <laughs> this squad is gonna wipe, ladies and gentlemen, and that's what we want to have happen too. You can see the strength and the increased speed looking pretty good here. As soon as the ice golem goes to revive those two minions, that's when you're gonna see. Uh, hopefully, we lose somebody before that, right? 
because we don't want to we, we ideally we want to cancel revive on the minions and also uh revive some of our allies so let's see what we can do here but so far i gotta say so good we get the extra turn there because she blocked revive on both of those minions but nobody was dead from our team i hope somebody dies here i think they will I think a lot of people will die pretty soon, right? And that's exactly what we want to have happen. Perfect, perfect. So it looks like we're out of this right now, right? But remember, seven turns isn't that long when we're talking about, you know, in dungeons. In the arena, it's a long time. But on an arena defense team, it's not that long either. And that's what I'm going to show you guys uh, in a little bit here. But check this out. So all we need to do is kill one of the minions here. We'll be able to keep this team alive between the Strengthen, the Miscreate Monster Shield, and the Ally Protect. And even if Lydia dies, no big deal, guys, because she's going to revive herself after she blocks Revival. And it's already almost been seven turns. I'm not keeping track, but it's close, right? So check this out. We need to kill a minion here. And once... Ah, we don't kill a minion. That was unfortunate. But once we do, and then the Ice Golem tries to revive... We're going to revive all of our dudes. <laughs> the whole squad's going to be picked back up. And again here, guys, I'm not saying this is a real team. It's just to kind of really illustrate the revival ability of, of uh, Lydia and how it can really change how you can approach a dungeon. Now, does this matter a ton, like, right now? Is this Why am I showing you this right now, right? Uh, not necessarily. However, in Doom Tower where we know the content's going to be super difficult, I think she's going to be a real game changer in terms of what she brings to the table with this revival. And there it goes. When, not only did we cancel revival on all of the, the the two minions, but we also picked up our entire team and Royal Guard able to finish that battle off. Now, I've had ones in the past running that same kind of comp where it's been even crazier. Like, she would die and there would only be miscreated monster and then she would revive herself and then she would revive everybody and we come from behind and win. And again, I was trying to kind of create an environment of oh crap i'm about to wipe in a in a battle against a reviver and who knows there's going to be what 13 bosses in doom tower guaranteed there's going to be a lot of revivers there out of those 13 mini bosses right so i think she's going to be very very useful in uh in doom tower however the good news is again here just to kind of stress this is i don't think she's like game breaking or anything like that let's go ahead and show her real quickly in spiders again i have her with a uh, saito here Pretty cool champ. Pretty cool champ. Not like S tier, but pretty cool. Uh, and again, in Spider, it's the same kind of thing. She has the uh, increased speed. We have the strengthens. So we can take a few more hits. And uh, she has, of course, most importantly, she has the decree, the weaken, and the the place of Draco Morph essentially in this dungeon. And she will be on my main Spider team because, well, she's better than Draco because she has the, uh, you know, I don't need all his poisons or anything for the Spider. Uh, I think I'd rather have the increased speed, and uh, there we go, and she's going to finish it off. Nope, she won't finish it off. Somebody else will, but there you go. So you can see she's a good support as well in Spider. I think she's you know definitely a must on any lineup who actually has her in Spider, or I shouldn't say a must on any lineup. Some people just run like five Royal Guards or whatever, four Cold Hearts. Actually, even if you do, even if you want to run four Cold Hearts, you just run her still as your debuffer, right? Uh, so there she goes there. So what I want to do guys is switch around her gear and her masteries as I told you guys uh, I'll show you her. I'll show you one arena battle with her in this build. But the thing is again I'm not really running her as a debuffer at this point. Well, I have no choice I have to I have to face these guys. This is only 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 one I can face But like let me just show you how much damage she does here. You guys saw how much damage she did in a dungeon Let me show you how much damage she'll do here against these uh probably weakish on the a2 like her big main ability it's not hot heavy hitting right 3000 4000 damage it's really not not anything crazy and even if i and keep in mind she's close to she's like 75 percent or so 80 percent crit rate somewhere around that uh, that area so those were including some critical attacks even if i doubled even if i really invested in her attack and i doubled her crit damage we're talking like 10,000, 15,000. Uh, on an AoE, so I just don't see her as a nuker being like her main role on a squad. Uh, I think I fell into gold. Okay, I'm back in platinum here. Uh, so now we're in platinum. We've got some really awesome opponents to face here, but what I want to do is change her build, you know? I don't need her necessarily on the team that I was just running, and let me show you again, uh, just to kind of show you. If I'm running a nuke squad, right, I'm generally running... A squad like this so it's been a while actually since I've ran my nuke team so let me do this this 
So I'm generally running something along these lines where I have my speed booster, my speed lead, and then my debuffer, and then my nuker, right? So against this squad, I can't even go against them because I'd be frozen by Tormund, but uh, that's kind of how I would run it, right? But I just don't see why I would run her in this situation over Madame Saris, you know, unless there was absolutely no buffers on the other team. I guess that would be the only reason. And even in that situation, you know, you're sacrificing a lot on this champion to build her with an accuracy chest and an accuracy banner and build her accuracy high enough to contend in platinum. So to me, it's just like, I don't want to sacrifice. I want to use her in dungeons as well. So I think you can still use her in dungeons and still have some decent accuracy to where she's landing the A3, the, the block cooldown skills, the block buffs. That's really, this is a great debuff to have in your kit. And you can still land that with 200 to, two, to 300 accuracy, not consistently against some of these high resist teams, but you can run it and it will land, you know, more often than not still, I feel like in Platinum Arena. So my thought process is, you know, this is probably not the team for her. Uh, at least I don't expect to see a ton of teams like this necessarily. Uh, you could even remove Lysandra and put somebody else in because she has the increased speed. You miss the turn meter boost as well. But, you know, that's kind of what I'm thinking about in terms of, I don't know. Let me just try to put, I don't know. Let me try to put Molly in there. I think Molly's in an immunity set. I'll probably wipe here uh, because everybody will get frozen. But let's just see what it looks like. And let's just see what she can do. If she can land these debuffs before block debuffs goes up. And they're double shielded right now. And again, this is where I would really want Madame Sarah, so she gets frozen. But I have Provoke here, and I only land it on two, so now they're gonna have block debuffs, and now it's over, you know? So not the best team to go against, and she would really need an immunity set or higher resist, and that's why, you know, long story short here, and we're just gonna wipe, but long story short is this is why I think I would prefer her in a, a more defensive team, you run her in the lead as a resist lead, 100 resist, and then you have her, you take advantage of her revive skill, you take advantage of her strengthen, because strengthen is very, it blocks 25% of incoming damage. So you put that strengthen with the block revive on a very strong defense resist team, and sure, you're not getting full utility out of this champion. You're not really getting, you're not seeing the benefits more often than not against defensive teams of her, her uh, weaken and her decreased defense. However, and look at this, we might turn the tables here, guys. She's going on a freaking tear because every time someone's frozen, she's A1ing them to death, right? <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see if we can actually come from behind and, and take this one. I'm still very, very skeptical. We will block revive though. But as soon as they hit me hard, Again, I'm going to lose Trunda. She's been frozen basically the entire battle. I can't get a big attack off. All it's going to take is one big nuke, but I don't even have like a, a Siffy to, to give me a full turn meter revive. I do have the revive from Molly, so we'll see real quick here. But again, not looking so hot, right? And remember, she'll block that revive even if she's dead, which is nice. And then she'll bring herself back to life, which is equally as nice. So I have two revivers on this team, kind of. I mean, Lydia's not a re she's a reviver, I guess, but you know, not in the traditional sense on an active skill. Uh, I have th so I have three revivers, I guess, two and a half. There we go. Uh, but it's gonna be nice if we can kill somebody and block a revive. It would be fantastic. But poor Trunda just can't get by. She can't get not throw frozen. Forgive the uh, double negative there. Uh, but again, let's see. Come on, Trunda. Now's your shot. Oh, man. All right, so we're going to get Block Revival here pretty soon. And we'll pick up uh, Molly again. And this is going to be interesting. Woo! We are clinging on to life here, guys. Okay, we lose one there. That's fine. Arbiter picks everybody back up. Molly's going to be getting close to her revival being open again. Oh, Trunda finally lands one. And we do it. And we Block Revive right there. Boom. Denied, passive, done. <laughs> so, and somehow we drop. <laughs> somehow we took so long in that battle that we dropped uh, in out of platinum. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> we'll get a quick victory here. And then I'm going to change the... Uh... But you guys saw what I'm talking about there, though. You know, 
I figured most people who unlock this champion, the reason that this is this video is so geared towards platinum players is because normally I don't talk that much about platinum arena in my videos because I figure that, you know, 99% of you guys would not even care about it. But I figure people who unlock her, that's where they're going to be, right? So that's why we're focusing on it so heavily in this video. So uh, now I'm going to change her because I just don't, you know what I'm saying? You guys get what I'm saying, right? Uh, I'd rather have that that debuff that buff stripper on the team, you know instead so in for masteries We're gonna change things around I'm gonna have to re I'm gonna have to pay for the reset because as I told you I tried her out in a nuke build as well And I'm gonna build her instead with the resistance and I'm gonna take that crit rate gauntlets off of her And instead I'm gonna put some uh, HP or defense. I'll come back after I uh, re-gear her and we'll talk about the changes all right, guys, so this is the new build that I have her in right now. High resist, and we sacrificed a lot of accuracy. So with 291 accuracy, I think we can still get off a bunch of these debuffs against, you know, specific teams. Uh, but with 490 resist, we're going to be able to resist most of the debuffs being thrown our way. Very seldom to have an over 490 accuracy check. However, there are plenty of champions out there that do, that do have that. So we have to keep an eye out for the teams that we face. 227, still very, very speedy. Almost 4k defense is a little low for a defensive team. 47k HP is all right. Uh, we have the option of putting her with a, a Mountain King with a shield set as well. But let's go ahead and run her in the team that I kind of had selected. Uh, to begin with so we have a reviver increased defense block debuffs with uh sippy and then we have a uh i think we can go valkyrie here uh yeah so i think it doesn't really matter that much honestly uh if we go with why am i not finding anybody <laughs> if i use, recently used first i feel like i just played uh two seconds ago with valkyrie okay she is right in front of my eyes all right in a crisk so we'll have that shield, we'll have the counterattack, we'll have that shield as well. Uh, it's going to be kind of a long, drawn-out battle, but a very, very robust defense. And it's going to be seldom that the opponent's going to be able to land debuffs on me. You can see a lot of resists there, and still not a ton of damage coming through. And that's the best nuker in the game, Trunda, right? So we were able to go ahead and survive that first wave of attack. And if we can do that, then we're good. I mean, we win. We won the, the, the match against nuking teams. Uh, so I think this is going to be a very, very solid kind of team composition. However, against, you know, the strongest nuking teams in the world, that team had Zargali. You really don't see her much in Platinum, especially end of season, which we're actually very close to, or end of the week, which we're close to right now. This is a Saturday after all. Uh, but, okay, this is a team with three Revivers. So this is more like it, like what we'll run into. And this is what this team is built to, to beat, you know, hopefully. So let's go ahead and see what we do. So if we're dying, if we can't beat these big, big nuking teams, I can put Mountain King in with a, he has a shield set on him. So that's another option I have in place of either uh, eh, Valkyrie or, so Valkyrie dies there, uh, or Krisk. That's okay that Valkyrie died though, because again, we have like revives on revives on revives on this team. Siffy will be able to pick her up first, but I think she'll do the buff, the block debuffs first. And nope, she'll revive first. And that's going to be great. So this is going to be a long battle. So, you know, maybe I'll make a cut halfway through. Or maybe I just won't show you that many arena battles. Uh, but remember, I mean, Rotos is largely mitigated because it ignores block revive. So even if he has a block revive ability that lands a death punch to any of my champions, it really doesn't matter at all because we're still going to be able to revive them, which again is just OP and insane to have on a champion. So three revivers, this is going to be a long, long battle, but think of going against this, this team on defense. Like if I ran this team as my defensive team, uh, there's ways to beat it. Don't get me wrong, but... I think it's going to be pretty difficult too at the same time, right? It's it's a challenging team. I do have my Valkyrie in a Swift Parry set as well. So you probably see it proc here at some point during this battle since she is the one that is being targeted. But here we go with a big shield, a counter attack. And again, it's just going to be a matter of time here. We're going to block the first revival. Do we? Okay, so we're going to block revival right now. It's going to be Raglan's, I believe, which is good. No, okay, we already blocked a revival. I missed it. My bad. But again, this is going to be like one of those teams that I would probably just not face before. Because having three strong revivers, one of them being Raglan on a two-turn uh, cooldown revival, just like, yeah, dude, I don't have 45 minutes of my life that I want to uh, that I want to use on this battle. But as you guys can see, 
this squad is just going to have it on lockdown. It might take a while because Raglan's going to pick somebody up. No, nope, she's going to die. And that's it, you know? And I feel like this team is definitely formidable. We're back again in Platinum, even though this is a Platinum lineup here. Let's just ref uh, refresh. Any really difficult teams here in terms of overall power? No. Let's see. I want to go after like the most challenging team I can possibly find. Warlord Ethos. Let's just go after this one. It's certainly not, it might not be the most powerful, but let's see what we can do. So again, challenging. Two Revivers, a huge Nuker in Ethos. You can see his nuke right there. Everybody's able to stay alive though, and they don't have any other like big nukage. And now we're able to get our buffs all up. So now Ethos won't be as big of an issue. We might lose Lydia, but again, and we do, but again, it's really not that big of a deal. So if he's going to pick her back up, and if Sivvy doesn't pick her back up, she'll be revived on her own as soon as the enemy attempts a revive. So this one is not going as swimmingly as the previous one, but let's go ahead and see what we can do here. We need to put out some damage because our Sivvy goes down, so we really need to kill somebody on their team, preferably Ethos. He has the lowest HP, and I could take it off auto and try to target him, or I could just let this play out. Let's just go ahead and let it play out here. So we have the continuous heal, the ally protect. Got to be careful though. Our HP is getting low. We need someone to revive and we block the revive. We're right back in this. <laughs> so block revive and more importantly, we're able to revive Siffy. So now we have all of her buffs. We have her revival all back up on the, the battlefield. And think of how much the tables just kind of shifted here, but it's not over yet because they have plenty of revives on their own. And Ethos hits like a truck, as you guys have seen but able to get everybody kind of back healed up thanks to the temporary shield of Valkyrie, able to kind of give us a second to catch our breath, allow the continuous heals of Krisk to kind of sink in. And again, Ethos kills Siffy. So right back into them having the matchup advantage at this point. And we're not able to block revive on that one either. We do block out cooldown skills. We need to kill Ethos ASAP. That way we can uh, block the next revive. And no, no, Ethos is going on a tear. Oh man. So, hey, they got the better of me that match. I'm going to go ahead and exit out. But actually, no. No. Because I need Chris to kill Ethos right now. And then someone to try to revive him. And then I'd be right back in this. But they're going to kill me. That's unfortunate. So, let's go ahead and see how things would have changed if we go in with... If we go in against that same team. And then I want to face the team above that, too. And But instead of running... Valk see this is a team that would be better off just nuking down but I kind of want to stay with this comp with a resist right so let's go with uh Mountain King instead and that's going to help with the shield a little bit uh I'm just trying to think of if I I'm going to take Chris out instead and I'm still going to run a Valkyrie on this squad just kind of a, a little switch up here I won't have the heals but I will have Mountain King to help me out with the initial blows here. We took a lot of damage on that first blow. So let's see what we can do here. So again, this is why we have Valkyrie still on the squad. Because we're going to need that shield right back up as soon as she goes. And, ah, uh, Warlord. Warlord gutter. So on cooldown, which is unfortunate. Now we can have increased defense, block buffs. We actually did uh, fall asleep there on Lydia. So we're not able to get the resist there. So we need to kill Ethos to pick Lydia back up. So again, not going so hot here. I'm tempted to just go with a... We'll block revive and pick her back up. I'm tempted to just go with a nuke squad here. But I'm, I'm kind of like seeing... The goal right now, for me at least, is to see what this champion is capable of, right? Like, see if this team... I, I, ideally, I just want to auto everything, right? And be able to beat any team. And this is the first time we kind of ran into a, a roadblock here. Uh, and obviously on offense, arena offense is, you know, fairly easy. You can choose your team so we can sit here and p pick out the perfect team to face this. But I'm kind of testing this, te this team out also for defensive capabilities. And this one's going a lot better. And we'll get, I, st I still think we have a revive block on the passive, right? Let's see. I guess we must have already blocked one because otherwise she would have been reviving already. Siffy that is. So, so far, again, landing fear every single time on that A1. 100% chance of landing a fear. And that time, she does get the revive. So, Arbiter's revived. She'll be able to revive. And we're back in this thing. but Or they're back in this thing, I should say. But still, 
I feel much better about this one than I did the last one with Mountain King on the squad. Especially against a Void Nuker, against an all Void team, Mountain King is going to do really well, uh, better than Krisk. And that's already kind of seen here. So again, we, we, we kill somebody there. Hopefully we can block Revive. Hopefully it's on cooldown here. Let's see if she goes again. She's going to go again before the Revival is up on Siffy. And I think that's going to be a block. Let's see. So almost killing Arbiter. Oh, definitely. So the block revives already up. So check this out. I think this is going to be game over. So maybe Mountain King is the answer. Oh, what? <laughs> Hasn't it been seven turns yet? Man, we, it must have been six turns. Someone can go back and count that. But I thought for sure uh, the block revive was good. Now let's see if we can get it here. Let's see. So killing these two revivers. So there it is. Still didn't block revive. I must have missed one somewhere. But either way, man, again, like I said, a longer video, but whatever. Fun to watch, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully for you guys. You know, I, you know, I'll, as we watch this one play out, I'll make this the last arena match of the video. But as we watch this one kind of play out here, guys, I uh, the intention of the video here at the end especially was to test out her in like kind of a defensive-based team and go against the hardest teams that we could find, basically, right? And, and see what she's capable of or see what a team like this is capable of. And so far, it looks really solid. Uh, I think she'll be a, a great champion in this game. Very viable in Platinum Tier Arena on a different, a, a few different compositions. There was a block revive right there. Uh, I wish Valkyrie was dead. That way she would come back with 50% HP. Uh, but yeah, guys, I think that she's great. But I really don't think that she's like game breaking. However, I reserve the right to change my mind when Doom Tower comes out. Especially if she's incredibly well equipped to deal with bosses that no other champion in the game is equipped to handle. I just don't see that being the case right now though. I can't really envision something that you you would need to have Lydia the Death Siren. And that again was my main concern about this champion. Is it gonna be a necessity to have her? If so, that's bad for the game. It's bad, bad for the you know competitive integrity of the game. Uh, you know, But I, I don't think that's the case right now. I think that if you don't have her, you're not at a Oh my god, insurmountable disadvantage, even in PvP. As you guys can see, I mean, there's a plenty of great champions out there. Uh, we're seeing a lot of them in this very match right here. And uh, yeah, this is going to be a long one, huh? <laughs> so that's my thoughts, guys. I want to hear your thoughts in the, uh, the comments below. What do you think? Do you think that she is too strong? Does she need another nerf? Keep in mind that she is the reward the for beating the game, essentially, right? The reward for completing the most difficult part of this game. Do you think she's worth it? Do, are any of you underwhelmed in this champion? Uh, love to hear from you guys in the comments on this one. And we're going to win this. Just going to take a while. This is not the battle that you want to be going into at the very end of Arena. A time that I'm too lazy to ever wake up for. But <laughs> let's see if we can go ahead and kill Siffy and Arbiter here. Or if I have to take it off of uh of auto and try to kind of chop them down one at a time it's funny mountain king just runs in there mountain king at this time has full uh increased attack so he's hitting like an absolute truck every time he goes in he's gonna build a one shot uh certainly ethos i'm not sure about siffy but we landed the block cooldown skills you'll notice there on arbiter uh vis-a-vis -vis the a3 and now we put her to sleep so now we should be going hard and ah oh, mountain king dude I just talked a big game about how beast mode you are and you barely nibbled at Siffy there. That Siffy must have very high defense. That was uh, pretty impressive. I think we'll have a block revive up though. And we do. So we deny that revive. Let's see if we can go in here and make something happen. I'm tempted to... Ah! <laughs> I was going to say, I'm tempted to just take it off auto. I think I'm going to. And just kind of... As soon as we kill Ethos, I'll take it off auto. And I need. we need to take Siffy down. We also need to play with the sleep of our Siffy and try to kind of mitigate that. So Arbiter is pretty easy to kill compared to Siffy, so I want to focus on Siffy first, even though with that, with all of that, uh, with all of the those uh, counterattacks, I'm actually not feeling too bad about maybe killing Arbiter here. The problem is Siffy picks up Arbiter, right? And Arbiter goes into AoE revive, so it doesn't really matter. So we really need to kill Siffy first. So it doesn't really matter how low her HP gets that of, uh, yeah. 
probably shouldn't have used her A2 there, but it doesn't really matter that much. And again, you can see that against a team like this, certainly if I'm running uh, Lydia on defense, you know, if she's built with a ton of accuracy, it's not going to matter. They're going to have block debuffs up like almost the entire time anyway. Uh, I will say it, it was kind of nice having Chris here to uh, to AOE, but we, we died. So I guess that's that, right? Uh, let's go. Let's see if we can get another block cooldown. Eh. I'm worried about Ethos getting a hard nuke here, but even if he does, it's going to be AOE. We'll be able to kill him, and we have enough. We have enough debuffs up right now that we should be good. So we did land the uh, block cooldown skills for two turns on uh, on Siffy. So now's our shot, I think. This is a seven-minute battle, man. This is going to be the longest video ever. I apologize. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give it, like, another minute. And if I can't, uh, I'll come to you guys at the end of this battle. This is a real long one here. I'll come to you guys at the end of this battle if, we, uh, if it takes forever. Uh, let's go in right now with this. I thought we could maybe kill Ethos. Just barely. Let's see what we can do. All right, guys. I'll come to you at the end of this battle. I'm going to beat this dude. I can feel it. Probably going to take me 20 minutes, but be right back. All right, guys. It was just a couple minutes later. We got the job done. We landed, actually, that was the A3 of Lydia, the blocking cooldown skills on uh, Siffy that allowed us to kill Arbiter and finally beat this dude 10 minutes into the match. So, guys, that is going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of this champion. Uh, and, as always, take care, guys.